Hi there, Tanya from moneygal.ca here. Welcome to my fifth video in my series on how to use Excel for your household budgeting. In the first video, we built a template for the household budget together, and in the second video, we filled it out and balanced our budget. In the third video, I showed you how I use Excel to track my money going in and out of my account every day. And in the fourth video, I showed you how to build this table if you want to use Excel the same way. And in this fifth video, now I'm going to show you what happens on January 1st when it's time to start a new year, how you get yourself, how you use the same table to get set up to start your new year of tracking your cash flow and your budget. All right, so um, the first thing I'll tell you is that for simplicity, I put all the money spent a year in this last week ending December 31st. But if this were real world, you actually would have numbers in all of these columns because as you were spending the money in each pay period, you were populating these columns. Um, so yours won't look like this. Yours will be much fuller than this come January 1st. The first thing we need to do for the coming year, though, is I can see that my bank balance has uh, has I have money in the bank at the end of the year. So you have to start the year, you have to reflect that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just transfer that amount into this uh, this cell here, A1, which is where I put all the money that comes in, if you'll remember. And if you've been using it, of course you know that. All right, so there we go. We start the year with a bank balance of 725.02. Now, the second thing I need to do is um, I'll take advantage while I have such a, an at-a-glance view of how I did with my spending against my budget for the year because I can see right away here the categories where I went over are red and I can see exactly what I went over by. So this is my opportunity before I start taking data out of this table, it's my opportunity to go and adjust my budget because you always base this coming year's budget on what you spent for last year. That's your best um, sort of best estimate of what you can expect to reasonably spec, uh, spend in the next year. All right, so I'm going to go back to my um, my budget and the first thing I'm going to adjust is I can see that I spent $80 more on my vehicle insurance so the cost of my insurance must have gone up so I'm just going to go and adjust this budget I'm actually going to add a hundred dollars I'm going to use nice round numbers in my budget the second thing is my heat again I guess the price of oil went up so I'm going to add a couple hundred dollars to my heat budget uh, hydro, same thing. I'm about a hundred bucks over if I round up, so I'll just adjust this year's budget for hydro. All right, my phone bill. I guess my plan went up, or I'm using more data, or whatever. So I'm just gonna add again. I'm gonna pad that. I'm gonna add about a hundred bucks uh, to what I expect to spend this year on my phones. All right, now before that takes care of all the categories you kind of have no control over, okay? Things like your insurance costs, the cost of heat, and so on. Those are things that you don't really have a choice. If you spent more, chances are it's just because it costs more. And unless you're just going to resign yourself to wearing sweaters around the house or whatever, you really just have to go with it and adjust your budget in those areas, okay? Unless you see a real huge deficit. I mean, none of these amounts were over by a lot. But if you saw that you spent over by $500 or $1,000, then you might actually want to look into what what's up and uh, find another solution. But other than that, you're basically just going to go with it. Before I go into these sort of um, more voluntary, if you want, uh, categories like gifts and clothing and how many haircuts you got this year and so on, uh, the, I'm going to go back to my budget and just make sure that my income is still accurate, okay? Because things happen, like let's say we I got a raise, yay, my paychecks are gonna be $100 more than they were last year, so I'm gonna make that adjustment there. Maybe uh, here I got a different job and now my paychecks are $702 a year instead of 653. The government, uh, I can expect the same tax return because sure enough, when I made my budget, I knew that in the past few years I could count on about $800 back at tax time and this year that happened again uh, and so on okay so I've double checked that everything's accurate on the income now I'm gonna go back and see okay what did I where did I overspend all right gifts I was pretty close I only spent five dollars over so you know what I bet you I can just keep the same budget for gifts this year clothing I went a hundred dollars over in clothing I probably could have been a bit more disciplined about that but let's say that just uh, my kids are growing more and let's say yeah maybe I should pad this budget so I'm gonna add a hundred dollars to this budget for the year 
and personal care. All right, you know what? I'm making a bit more money. Yeah, we can probably afford to go for that extra haircut this year. All right, and I can see down here that my budget is still balanced. Of course, you remember from my other video that if our budget is not balanced, this is what happens. It turns red, and the idea is to keep tweaking those numbers until you have your budget back in the black. All right, now the thing that's nice here is that I can see that actually, um, because of that raise and uh, because I've been so disciplined with my um, spending, that I have some extra money. So you know what? I can decide at this point to scroll some of that money away. I could decide that now is the perfect time. Let's say I was getting my debt under control. And uh, let's say I decided that I could afford to start squirreling away a bit into my savings. Now might be the time where I can do it. Maybe I could put, you know, maybe this year I'll put a thousand dollars aside and maybe Look at this, I still have money over, so why don't I um, put more money on my debt and pay it down even faster? That would be a really fine use of my money, wouldn't it? So I'm just going to keep adjusting this amount. Oh, whoops, okay, maybe not that much. Let's say 650 then. Yay, all right, so I still, I still balance. Everything's good. I'm now, I made sure my income was good. I made sure all my categories were good. All right, so... Back to my table here. The last thing that needs to happen is I just need to delete my data for what I spent. So I'm just going to select and delete all the spending I did this year. Now, like I said, these would all be populated. I'd have to be sweeping through there and deleting all that as it is. And this first week of the year. Doop. All right, so now I'm back. You can see that the amount that came in is exactly what's in my bank account. So I know I've erased all my spending. And then I just need to adjust this date because last year my first pay period ended on January 15th. But now I'm looking at the calendar and I can see that this year it's going to end on January 16th. So I just changed that. And like magic, all these other dates changed because you'll remember from our last video that we had put a formula in here for the dates. I really am lazy when it comes to typing Excel. I let the machine do as much for me as possible. So that's it. As easy as that, I'm now ready to start my year. So I just... Um, just to recap the steps, I transferred my bank balance as income to make sure that that money uh, is still reflected accurately. I um, adjusted my budget, making sure that my income is up to date and that I accounted for any extra spending or cost of things that went up or whatever, and took a good look at my debt repayment strategy and my savings strategy for the year, balanced my budget for the year, then I deleted all my spending from last year, and I just updated the first week ending date for the first pay period of the year. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to visit me at my website, moneygal.ca. Thanks for watching.